Hi, I'm Shane Rattenbury, the leader of the ACT Greens and the ACT's Attorney General. At the age of 10, a child loses four baby teeth a year, can name the months of the year in order, and has probably been given a pen licence. In Australia, a 10-year-old can also be arrested by police, remanded in custody, convicted by the courts, and imprisoned. Recently, the ACT has taken another step towards raising the age of criminal responsibility from 10 years old, with the release of a discussion paper that lays out the basis for the change and seeks community views on exactly how this change should work. We have a critical and historic opportunity to change the way we treat vulnerable and marginalised children. When children commit crimes, it is an anomaly. Something is wrong. Children don't commit crimes because they are evil people. A child who commits a criminal act has, overwhelmingly, arrived at that point through trauma, mental health issues, abuse, neglect or disability. Ignoring this history and addressing the child's behaviour out of context through the criminal justice system does not function as a deterrent. Instead, it sets their trajectory towards future offending. Locking children up is ineffective as a crime prevention measure. In fact, the strongest predictor of future criminality is the normalisation of criminal behaviour via an early prison sentence. The ACT government's commitment to raising the minimum age of criminal responsibility began with a motion I moved in the Assembly to raise the age to 14, followed by a Greens election commitment at the 2020 election. It is now in the parliamentary and governing agreement formed between the Greens and Labor. The commitment to raise the age is a recognition of the evidence from stakeholders in fields such as psychology, paediatrics, social work, child protection, mental health, disability and forensic medicine. It is also in line with the position of the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child. Changing the law is not enough, however. There's a lot of work that comes both before and after that. Before new legislation comes into effect, we need to make sure that the right alternative systems are in place. To prevent and discontinue harmful behaviour, there still needs to be a system to address these causes, even when we acknowledge that the system cannot be prison. We know that we must give appropriate attention to safeguarding the community. We also know that we must ensure no child is left unsupported. We are already working to identify what restorative and therapeutic services are available to provide this support and importantly accountability, as well as what gaps need to be filled. There are some difficult questions to explore and we know that addressing childhood trauma and abuse will not be a quick fix, either in individual cases or on the wider societal level. We will need strong avenues for restorative justice and supporting the rights of victims, because there will still be victims from this harmful behaviour. We will need close coordination between different support services, police and the health system. We have some technical legal challenges to solve, such as the approach to children who have already been sentenced as 10 or 12 year olds and whether historical convictions should be extinguished. We're looking for informed answers on these and dozens more questions to ensure the ACT scheme succeeds for the community and its at-risk children. We dare to hope that by leading the way, we will show that this change is not only possible, but is worth all the hard thought going into it. The evidence shows that raising the age is the right thing to do, and we are determined to do it. The ACT government will approach this problem with positivity and a clear plan. We hope our experience will pave the way for the rest of Australia. Hi, I'm Emma Davidson. I'm the ACT Greens MLA for Murrumbidgee, and I'm also the ACT's Minister for Youth Justice. Imagine a world where there is no need for the Bimbra Youth Justice Centre. At Canberra, where our services are so integrated and robust that we can support the complex, unique needs of young people and families when they need it and where they need it. We are getting there because we do not give up on children and young people, and raising the minimum age of criminal responsibility gets us one step closer. Many young people who find themselves in the youth justice system have a series of underlying complex and unique issues, such as trauma, drug and alcohol abuse, mental health issues, abuse, neglect, homelessness or disability. Recently, I spoke with the ACT perinatal mental health team, which highlighted that the most fulfilling part of their job is knowing they are putting a stop to intergenerational trauma. The mothers they support often have a deeply rooted, highly traumatised background from their own relationships with their parents. 
they are often worried they will repeat those harmful behaviours with their own kids. It's unfortunate these women are experiencing mental health challenges, just like it's unfortunate that children become involved with the justice system. While there are supports available, we need to coordinate our services and ensure they are holistic, accessible and strengths-based to meet the needs of all young Canberrans and children. The ACT Government has a responsibility to ensure services are available and tailored to the individual needs of children and young people and ultimately keep them out of the justice system. The impact of childhood trauma sticks with people throughout their lives and is often transferred onto their children. When people lose faith in young people, they can land in the youth justice system. Earlier this year, I was proud to launch the Functional Family Therapy Pilot to provide intensive, robust and specialised support for young people and their families. The Diversion Program focuses on meeting the needs of our young people before they enter or re-enter the youth justice system. Providing these supports and keeping at-risk families in touch with services can keep young people out of the justice system. It can eliminate intergenerational trauma. That's what we're doing in the ACT. Supporting children and young people is transformational for future generations. The ACT government has been spearheading discussions nationally about how we raise the minimum age of criminal responsibility. Last week, ACT Attorney General Shane Rattenberry launched a dis discussion paper around the complexities and viewpoints of this change. This is an exciting time for Canberra and gives us an opportunity to reimagine our entire youth justice system. The reality is, we cannot do it without the Canberra community. We want you to engage with us and share your thoughts. This is not a new concept and Canberrans have been largely receptive to raising the age of criminal responsibility so children as young as 10 are not being thrown into the justice system. We have the data. Once they're in the justice system, they're likely to re-enter again later in life. No child is a lost cause. We have a responsibility as a community to support, teach and help them overcome unique or complex challenges so they do not engage in harmful behaviours. It truly does take a community to raise a child and together we are doing that.